Hey everyone, it's Melinda. Nice to see you all again. Um, if you missed my last video, it was on opals, so definitely be sure to uh, check out my page or my group to see that one. And I want to thank everyone for uh, the support that I received on that video. I shared it around to my favorite groups as well as in my own, you know, social media pages and it was just so nice to see all of those uh, likes and comments and I'm glad that people enjoyed it. <clears throat> so today we're going to be covering my personal collection of ammonites and amylite. And, you know, kind of go over, like, why is their name so similar? That can be so confusing and people do tend to mess that up a lot. Um, you know, why? Like, why? Why is that? Are they the same? Are they similar? Um you know, what's going on with that. And uh, I personally, you know, was wondering the same thing myself, so I thought I'd share it all with you. So we're just going to start off with um, my ammo knights here, these beautiful fossilized creatures on this side. Um, these were marine animals uh, that belonged to the mollusk family uh, class cephalopod. Uh, and as you can see, they had a coiled external shell uh, similar to uh, modern-day nautilus that we still have roaming the oceans to this day. It's a creature that has a very long lineage, <laughs> extremely, extremely long. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, my red ammonite is 150 million years old. Holy freaking cow, right? And that's when it fossilized, so this creature is an incredibly, incredibly like ancient can't describe it because it's beyond, beyond ancient. <laughs> um, and these beautiful, uh, what we call opalized, but I'll do a quote because that's false as we'll learn later. Um, <clears throat> beautiful opalized ammonites. They are between 30 to 60 million years old. Not quite as old as this guy, but oh my gosh, still like mind bogglingly old. Absolutely fascinating to me. So <clears throat> we'll start with these ones and give them a little bit of a closer look. They're among my favorite for so many reasons, but one of those reasons being this really gorgeous shell that they have. And it is, in fact, you know, their shell. It's not opalized. This hasn't uh, formed a layer of opal like some uh, rock dealers and uh, metaphysical shops might think or you know, promote. Um, <clears throat> it's actually uh, the remaining pieces of its shell after having been fossilized. So when this creature was alive, or even to this day, creatures like this that are alive, their beautiful multicolored rainbow shell is often referred to as knacker or naker. However, once it's fossilized like this, uh, we tend to go with the mineral name, like what that shell actually consists of minerally, and that would be aragonite. So that's what actually gives it that beautiful sheen, not opal, okay? Opal is just kind of like a, a name that was attributed to it because of its color, but unfortunately it's false. You know, so it's just good to know. It's good to know the real story of things. And it is not oval, but still totally fascinating and absolutely gorgeous. Okay. <clears throat> so, when these creatures fossilize, they usually recrystallize with calcite um, and sometimes quartz. Although you can also find uh, py pyrite ones as well. I don't have that, as you can see in my collection, but I have desperately wanted one for quite some time. Definitely uh, willing to hear some, <laughs> uh, some sales from you guys. If you have any, I would definitely be interested. I would absolutely love to have one in my collection, a pyrite-tized ammonite. But this one, as you can see... I can show you the two of them together. It's been split, split ammonite. You can see it goes perfectly together. So the exterior shell, the aragonite mineral, I mean, there is little flashes here and there, but obviously, well, 
that's nice there, but it's it's not as pristine as we would like in these types of specimens here. So someone took it upon themselves to split it and polish it. And what we see on the inside is beautiful calcite and little tiny bits of quartz as well. So when these guys uh, turned into stone, <laughs> a little layer of their shell remained behind. And like I said, that mineral is mainly aragonite. Um, the thinner the layer, the more colors you will see, like blue-purple, like these ones down here. The thicker the layer of aragonite, the more you're likely to see vibrant reds and greens. That's how we get these red ammonites. So what about amylite? You know, why do they have that same name, basically just one letter removed? They must be related, right? Well, they are. They are absolutely related. So this type of gemstone is one of the very few organic gemstones that we have. I mean, we also have uh, amber and pearl. Um, it's mostly found along the eastern slopes of the Rocky Mountains of North America, but we do have a really, uh, I don't know, substantial uh, occurrence happening in Alberta that's being mined and definitely does produce really, really gorgeous amylite. So, like I said, um, similar to these, because this is literally a hunk of a big one of these. This is obviously a different um, outlook came from it. Uh, but this would be a hunk of an ammonite, perhaps larger scale. And the argonite, this is still argonite, similar to these. Just much, much thicker, so that we get these uh, green and red flashes more so than the purple uh, and blues that we're more accustomed to in these ones. This is my largest piece, and it is a Canadian one. So apart from argonite, this thin, beautiful layer, and this one has been um, given like a, I don't know, an epoxy or I don't know, something on top to preserve it because it can be very, very fragile. The layers of amylite uh, range between 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 millimeters. That's extremely, extremely thin, so very, very, very thin layer. So the entire specimen uh, can range... And not only just including argonite, but can also include calcite, silica, and pyrite, other minerals. Um, and the shell itself uh, can also include aluminum, barium, chromium, copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, strontium, titanium, and vanadium. A lot of possible little trace minerals on that layer of amylite as well. So... <clears throat> The iridescent color that it's obviously praised for, um, I'll show my necklace next, a little pendant. So yeah, that beautiful iridescent color uh, occurs when uh, an interference of light rebounds from the stacked layers of argonite, the really thin like platelets of argonite that make up amylite. Oops, sorry, maybe I'm getting too close. There you go. So like I said, the thicker the layers, the more reds and greens that will show up, will flash, and the thinner will be more blues and violets. The blues and violets are actually rarer in amylite form uh, because it becomes so thin that it chips off very easily and doesn't often make it into a gem like this. However, my most recent amylite find, which makes me so incredibly happy, is this beautiful piece. 
And I purchased this one from Sonatona Gemstones. Oh, I love it. So it starts off kind of like a red, orange, yellow, green, and then into a blue and then purple. I absolutely love this one. See that? Wicked Flash. Oh, I just love it. Yeah, so this one tends to be <laughs> more pricier than possibly the other ones because of that wicked rainbow of color that it's got there. But Amylite in general is very, very expensive. It's not very uh, easy to find. It's not all over the world. There are very few occurrences of it. So it tends to be extremely pricey. But worth it. I absolutely love it and it's one of my very favorites. So another thing to note is that amylite is very rarely uh, seen without its matrix attached to it because it's so extremely thin and it's extremely rare and very unlikely that you'll have amylite crystal on both sides of your specimen unless you have like a an actual chunk of, of fossil I suppose like a larger specimen. And a word that's often referred to when talking about amylite is frost shattering. And you can see it really well in this one. Um, it's very common and actually gives it a more beautiful effect, I think. I love it. Um, so that happens when the specimen has been like exposed to really cold weather or um, compressed by sediments. And those really, really thin layers of amylite uh, tend to kind of crack and flake um, and also if you are going to be cherishing one of these pieces uh, remember that the sunlight can have an effect on the colors that we see so you just want to be aware of that and don't put it right in the window or something like that don't leave it out right in the sun yeah here we go Ammonite versus Amylite. I hope everyone enjoyed looking at my beauties and maybe learned something interesting. I know I definitely learned a lot of really interesting things researching for this. So thank you so much guys for the opportunity and uh, hopefully I'll see you again next time.